All right, in this video, um, we're gonna show you how to personalize the learning experience for students. It's kind of a corny way to just tell the students, hey, I see you. It's um, really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get the students to input their student name in Desmos and then um, use that name throughout the slides. So I'm gonna show you, it's super easy and it's kind of corny, and, uh, but it's a way to help students kind of get drawn in to the learning experience. So let's get started. All right, so um, basically what I'm gonna do is, uh, we're at, at Desmos, all right, and so I'm gonna click on custom and I'm gonna click on new activity and oh, let's just call this uh, da, 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 insert student name. Bah, 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 bah. That makes it easy for me to find it later and delete it. <clears throat> All right, so now that I've created it, I'm gonna just do two simple components for starters. All right, so let's just do uh, a name and let's do a text input. All right, I mean, uh, I said name, I meant note. All right, so let's name this note note <laughs> and let's name this one let's call this name input all right and so now it's really easy so what's going to happen is the students themselves are going to enter the, their name here right so when i click preview wabam that's where they're going to put their name and then we want to have it show up over here in the note now you're not seeing the note because right now it's it's blank all right, so uh, I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna give it some content. All right, so let's let's uh, message equals hi there, comma. Now I want to put the student's name right there. All right, now when I hit done and go to preview, you're not seeing anything yet. Why? Well, because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to say, and I want the content to show up on the screen. And what's the content that I want to show up on the screen is the message. So I'm gonna just go in here and insert that variable message and end the quote right there. So now it's gonna, the variable is message and it's gonna say, hi, their name. It's, and then the content is going to display that message. So when I hit done, I hit preview, whoop, bam. But right now, unless my student is named name, this is no good. So what we're gonna do is we need to replace that word name with a, a variable, all right? Now that variable is gonna be uh, involving this word name input, all right? So this component is called name input and that's important that we remember that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here. There's two ways to do this. I could just simply replace this word name with there's my kind of my indicator that here's a variable and I'm gonna put in name, ah, oh, there it is, and I'm gonna click alias, dot content. There it is. Now when I, that, that means whatever the student puts in as the, in that name component, name input component, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be flushed into this message right here, which is then gonna be displayed. All right, so when I hit preview, hi there, blank. Ooh, it doesn't say name anymore, it's blank. Why is it blank? Because I haven't started typing. And look at that, as I type Dwayne, it's showing up over here. You now know <clears throat> that is it. Wherever you want the student's name to appear, you just do that bracket. Let's get in here, get my face out of the way. You just do that bracket, uh, dollar sign, bracket, name input dot content, bracket. And that's where uh, the, your name, the student's name is gonna put in. Whatever that student types in is gonna show up. Now, there's ways we can do this. Other, I mean, places we could put it. I could put it at the slide or screen level. I can click there and I can say uh, title because that's the name of the, the, the title place. That's the location. Um, welcome comma and then if i want that student's name i'm going to do dollar sign bracket bracket and then inside that bracket remember what i'm going to put i'm going to put name input because that's the name i gave that input uh component dot 
content. And then I have to close the quotation. So the title is going to be welcome. And then the student's name. And I don't see anything yet because when I hit preview, wa-bam, there's the title. And now as I type in my name, it's showing up simultaneously in both locations. Now, the neat thing is uh, I can make, uh, I can cause the name to show up on any slide simply by referring to that same uh, component, nameinput.content. All right. Um, as long as no other component is named name input, we're good. And it, why would I name another component name input? Because that's the beginning of the of the assignment. So, for example, if I want to do another slide, and in this slide I'll just simply put an, an, a component. Let's call this note two. I always, I often will name it note two because it's on slide two. If I was on slide eight, I would have called this note eight. And that number just ensures that my components are all uniquely named. All right, and so again, I'll just go in here and I will just put, oh, let's just go straight to content. Well, I could do message. Let's just do message equals, and I'll say um, this, is page two comma and then i want to insert the student's name so i'll put name input dot content and oh well, let's be excited and, and put an exclamation point and then of course i am going to do content because i need it to display and let's do message wa bam now when i click done now and hit preview, you're not gonna see any name. That's because every time I'm in preview mode, I have to kind of go back, I have to type in my name, Dwayne, it shows up in both of those places, and then when I hit next, wa-bam. So this is how you pass variables around. The idea is um, you recognize, uh, what do you do? <clears throat> you recognize what's the, like the name of the component, and the content, and then you can place it anywhere throughout your entire slide deck. All right, so what if I wanted to insert uh, the student's name into a graph? All right, and, and I'll explain why we would want to do that later uh, in a little bit, but first let's just drag in a graph. So now I over here, I got my, that's where the name pops up into the note component. This is where the student enters in the name down here. Now, right here, so I'm gonna call this graph one because we're on screen one. I'm gonna enter the graph, I'm gonna edit the graph, and I'm gonna insert a single point at this point right now. Uh, now, when I click done and hit preview, there's the point, nothing fancy going on right here. So now, what that, that point, I have to remember that that's graph one and it's point A, all right? So now, what I'm gonna do is in the graph component computation layer right here so we're going to do point oops lowercase p point label see that point label oh man parse ordered pair that is such a powerful uh, function so we're going to do point label now it's a sync because it means information is going to be displayed on the screen i'm going to click sync and remember what was the point? The point was A. And then what is the information that I want to show up in the point label? Well, it's the name input dot content, All right? And this time you'll notice I didn't have to put the dollar sign bracket, dollar sign bracket, bracket, because it's going directly, there's this is the variable, so I don't need this at this time. All right, see how my error message went away? And then when I click done and hit preview, so I still have the title, I still have the message in the note, uh, but now I have this point. So now watch what happens when I start. Okay, I'll put applesauce. Whoop! 
applesauce. Is it as applesauce one word or two words? I don't know. Um, so there you go. Now you're starting to see applesauce right here showing up in three places. It's on the title, it's in the note, it's also on the graph. Why do we want to do that on the graph? Well, I don't know. Let me let me show you. So let's go up here and I'll just do uh, an image search for name tag and I misspelled it but I, it gave me something that I want. Uh, perfect. I will drag that one because that's exactly what I want. And there's the, there's the graph. Uh, uh, name tag. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I can, if I wish, oh let's go into a, a second, add a second slide here. All right, now in that second slide I'm gonna drag in a graph. I'm gonna edit the graph and I'm gonna bring in that image. Well, bam, right there. <laughs> this is so cool. And then I'm gonna name it, oh, let's name this one, point B. I think I could have named it point A. And there's point B, and I'm gonna go down here. I am going to indicate that I want the label, so I'm gonna click and hold. I want the label to be up at the top. And oh, let's make the point, the size, uh, five and there we go now i'm also going to hide that point right so there i'm gonna go to wrench let's turn off the grid let's turn off the axes and there i've got this nice name tag and what's going to happen right here is the student's name is going to show up okay. how am i going to get that student's name to show up well uh i oh let's name it graph two because it's always good to uh, be consistent with naming your components. I'm going to go in the computation layer and again remember I'm going to type in P for point label lowercase p that's the sink. I want to label point B and what do I want to label point B? I want to label point B with the name dot content. And when I do that and hit preview nothing happens why well because you got to go back to slide one you got to type in oh let's do francisco in fact let's do a comp an exclamation point let's see what happens oh interesting so certain places has that second exclamation point because i had already typed an exclamation point in the message but now i don't have to hit submit because i didn't program that as a requirement but when I hit next, well, bam Now Francisco's name is showing up on the name tag. Kind of goofy, kind of goofy. But, you know, it's we got to do these kinds of things to help students get engaged and create these little Easter eggs to cause students to be looking around. What I've done is I've hidden their names in a variety of places. And so every slide is almost like a new Easter egg hunt where the students are having to look for where their names are popping up. You could put their names in buttons. You can name put their names inserted into multiple choice um, options. You could put their names everywhere and it's kind of geeky, but it's fun to watch eighth graders suddenly be looking around for where their name is on each slide. And that's the beginning, at least that's the first step towards getting kids engaged in the learning process. This has been Dwayne. I want to thank you. Have a good, <laughs> we're over here at this camera. Have a good day.